chapter 6 verse 10. We have no information. <laughs> Tonight's meeting there, I know we, we I, I our name will do so well with time. It's just past five. We are still within our program time. I'm going to pause us and teach. It's a day that I endure to the end kind of day. I'm not saying even 7 o'clock, no. But let me teach. We'll pick it right from there. There's going to be such enforcement of the kingdom in our life. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be such enforcement of the kingdom. I've just been watching the trend of the teaching, the worship. I'm like, wow, amazing. Not even by 64 I guess. And then I'll be like, no. He kept asking me, what am I going to talk about? I said, face the Lord. <laughs> what is so and so talking about? Face the Lord. And here we are. I think that time, that we are here. You know who I don't know is now? And you know who I know is. Let me say something to you. One of the things the Lord has said us to do is to actually redefine this area of leadership. People follow us at the beginning. Is it relationship and marriage? Yes, it is. Why? We have done things outside his depth, so we have failed a lot. Yes. <laughs> we follow online, you know how much we teach. But we never miss the opportunity when we gather corporately to lift him up, touch him, and let him touch us. That's how the demons will not defeat us. That's how they will not outsmart us. Paul said to them, forgive that guy, restore him to the fold, so that Satan will not outsmart us. <laughs> There's a present which, which, which we have to do. It's the might of the Almighty. Please sit down tonight. You guys will be back shortly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me say I heard that the last Saturday of November, except the venue is absolutely not free, we'll be back for the Miracle Sit Out. We have the 30 days of miracles in November. We'll be back for the Miracle Sit Out last Saturday. What date is that now? November. Usually we use the very last Saturday. But all through November, we see great things. God is not limited to times. We are. So we have to schedule things. 27th November. So take note of that already. That's just going to be a miracle service. Worship, miracles. How many of you were in the last 30 days of miracles or participated online? This is a large new crowd. You see pains and lungs disappear. He was in the hangout. We're just worshiping like this and deaf ear. Different kind of testimonies. The might of the Lord is here. The might of the Lord is here. There are three dimensions of success in relationship and marriage you need to know. Three dimensions. So let's jump to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, so I can lay a foundation for those dimensions. And you understand why I, I just was moved in my heart when I heard, Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Matthew chapter 6. Then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When God refers to earth, he doesn't refer to the place for that my kingdom come. His emphasis and focus is man. 
So the question I would ask tonight is, when you look at your life, has the kingdom come? What is the kingdom? I'll jump ahead of myself. It is the domain of the king where his word is law. So that any area of our life where the kingdom hasn't come must be an area we should be angry. So at his, as it has to do with, since we're doing relationship and marriage, your marital destiny, there is a contention for the kingdom to be manifest. Thy kingdom come. Why did he teach us to pray now? This is no less a person teaching us to pray than Jesus himself. And his focus here is thy kingdom come. If Jesus taught us to pray, this is important. That means there's something important about the prayer. If it's not important to pray the prayer, he wouldn't ask us to pray thy kingdom come. Then he backed it up by saying thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means we can have a pictorial representation of how his will is done in heaven. Because he will not ask us to pray in vacuum. There must be a way his will is done where he's referring to. Because when you compare a thing, then you are in essence drawing our attention to something. What was he drawing our attention to? Because the essence of a kingdom is the dominion of a king. If you jump with me to Isaiah 11, 1 to 6, you begin to get a picture of how he runs his kingdom. Elements of the kingdom. Dimensions of the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A shoot will come up. By the way, when Jesus was teaching them to pray this way, the context with which they received him as, you know, Jews was because they expected a king to come. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, that's David, all right, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Next verse. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In essence, nobody, if I understand this dimension of the kingdom, should love a woman better than I do. The spirit of counsel and of might. This is why, see, I've gone to many places for interview on top of the anointing upon my life. If you have ever sent me questions and I'm going to be on TV or radio and I told you I will read it, it is true. Preparation is good, but there are certain things that are by anointing. The spirit of counsel. Preparation is good, though. Very good. I prepare. That's why I have notes. But what the grace can give, what the spirit gives. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is not my focus tonight. I'm just passing through the scripture. His delight is in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. This is not my emphasis, isn't it? But these are how people miss their husbands or their wives. Why? They judge by the sight of the eye. Not the sight by hearing of his ears. Uh -huh. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Speaking. And with the breath of his lips. Uh -uh. The spirit of the Lord is on you now. He shall slay the wicked. Come with me, next verse. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins. This is not my focus. I've an entire series on this. You know where your loins is now. <laughs> no, there's one year, year movement now that are fighting the purity movement. And they say that uh, this thing we are preaching to people to be, uh, to be righteous with their body. That is no longer practical in our civilization. That our mother's earth is a movement gaining ground. I'm not talking unbelievers, Christians. That our parents married before they were 25. That how can you be telling a woman or a man at 35 in our modern day reality? And faithfulness, the belt of his waist. This is not our focus tonight. We're going somewhere else. Loins and waist. Regal, <laughs> regal, regal, regal. Excellent. 
The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. This is the highest form of peace you can see. I'm giving you a picture of the kind of kingdom we're talking about. And this is not even wolf and lamb. This is a man filled with the spirit. But the kingdom gives us a picture. So he beats the mind of God when he sees that people at his children and go home and fight dirty. Like, he, he looks again and says, which kingdom? My kingdom? The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. <laughs> Does it make sense? Leopard. Young, not even a, a big goat, a young goat. Fresh. Like fresh you. Like those people that use Domino's to relax like me. I need ice cream tonight. It's not, it's not possible. I'm not the, after this kind of exertion of grace, no. I take ice cream. The spirit is not tired, but the body can be. <laughs> you feel. You know, you know what I mean? You realize the body. <laughs> it's like saying me and chewed ice cream tonight. You know, there are ice cream and there are ice cream. When you buy some ice cream, it's like sand and ice mixed together. No. But when you take some, they are smooth. Glory to God. Have you ever had chocolate kind of ice cream under certain stress? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The God that has helped me is that I don't have tendencies. I'll be gone. Oh God. So it's like telling me tonight, I will go and lie down. Then my wife will put proper ice cream beside me and you meet the ice cream in the morning. What sort of peace is that? <laughs> the leopard and a young goat. That's the picture of the kingdom he's talking about. Aha, uh -huh, please keep the scripture on. <laughs> thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where are these people? Come into the kingdom, my brother. Do I come and lay hands on you where you are? Yeah. The calf and the young lion and the fatlings together and the little children shall lead them. There's a kingdom. Daniel chapter 4 verse 7. Daniel chapter 4 verse 7. There's a picture. Daniel 4 7. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in, and I told them the dream, but they did not know, they did not make known to me. It's me interpretation. Next verse. But at last Daniel came before me, his name Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. In him is the spirit of God. And I told the dream before him saying, sorry, go back to verse 4. I went too far. I went to the result. I want to give Daniel chapter 7. We are going into the result of the manifestations of the foundations I want to lay. Four verse, uh, 7 verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle wings. I walked till his wings were off and he was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on it like a man and the man's heart was given to it. Next verse. And suddenly another beast, a second. Jesu Christo. Hey! 4 verse 7. Go back to... I say, am I teaching eschatology tonight? What went on? Good. Then the magicians and the astrologers, the chariots and the soothsayers came in and I told them the dream, but they did not make known the dream or, or its interpretation. Next verse. But at last Daniel came before me, his name according to blah, blah, blah. Next verse. Uh-huh. Belshazzar, chief magician, know that the spirit of the holy God is in you 
and no secret troubles you, explain to me the vision of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. Why? The spirit of the Holy One, go back, is in you. Do you really have the spirit that you are claiming to have in? That's the kingdom we're talking about. Now let's 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 jump in. The first time I was or some, recently I was teaching about this in one mentoring forum, and somebody walked in who was going to get married, and they needed to join the mentoring forum, and he said, "I came in to learn marriage, and I was hearing Lucifer dimension, Gabriel dimension, Michael dimension." But let me quickly say this: that God referred us to a kingdom we must research. How is that kingdom set? There are three dimensions made known to us through scripture that we can see. Indeed, the Lucifer dimension is the first. So I talked about three dimensions of a successful marriage, right? Write it down, I will explain. Dimension number one is the Lucifer dimension. Hey, some people will say, where did we come to tonight? Dimension number two is the Gabriel dimension. And number three is the Michael dimension. Let's extray the kingdom he referred to. Let us try to see what he's talking about because he drew our attention to a kingdom which should come. How do we recite that kingdom? We recite that kingdom by what he said and showed us about that kingdom. By the way, it's only Michael that was referring to by the activities of Gabriel and Lucifer we can guess or hazard a guess that there were archangels. Because the Bible refers somewhere to Gabriel's pair, Michael's pair. So he was not alone in that archism, that powerful place. But let us see these three dimensions. Go to Ezekiel 28 verse 14. The Lucifer dimension, please don't see him as Satan at this point, okay? <laughs> see him within the context of what God made him. All right? For a relationship and marriage to succeed, Julia did a great job on this first point. It must have the intimacy and depth dimension. I cannot love my wife enough, my nurse, the depth that I carry in God. She lacks the capacity to make me all she expects me to be if God does not. Look at this guy, Lucifer. You were the anointed cherub who covers I have to recite this whole issue of covering. Who can cover God? Then you read the vision of all the prophets who said, when I came into the temple, his strength filled the temple. Can you cover God? It was a picture of intimacy. The ones who are allowed so close, who can lean over him. Some angels won't dare this place. If not, God will not describe it this way for one of them or some of them. Just like when he came to Job and was challenging Job. <laughs> he said, you know where the stars sang unto the Lord. And when you go through all of those analysis of those stars, you know that he's referring to angels. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. Are you, he's talking about a place. He's talking about a place. Let me tell you the truth. A lot of relationships aren't succeeding just because the people involved have no depth in God. Finish. When anger comes, anger has them at will. When bitterness comes, it has them at will. There's no presence to knock it off. See, let me say this to you. Our hope in this marriage is our repeated appearance before his presence our repeated appearance before his presence. Even when we fail, when we appear, there's both forgiveness and correction. When we are weak, we come there, we take up his strength. Dimensions of his presence. That kingdom had a dimension of Lucifer. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. There's a place where angels don't dare. 
There's a place where other creatures cannot dare. It's the depth of it. That's our hope here. A galactic man like me. No presence. You're, you're in trouble. You go to look for us by no go see That's your hope. That's what will make you who God has called you to be. This is why a lot of believers are frustrated and stranded. Because there's a pull on your inside to be higher and you're wondering, why am I low? There's a depth we must touch to catch up to what he has spoken concerning us. You know, it's so easy. You know, I've been posting some scenarios on Facebook and people will slam, slam the people, slam the people. You don't have sense, you don't have sense. <laughs> As a counselor, I have seen people in weaknesses that they are helpless about. They are not doing it because they want to, but because they don't know the place. There's a place. That place is our hope. I'm so terrible for you without that place. You'll be horrible for me without that place. That place is not about religion. No. It's not about I'm in church. I mean, I'm in this. I mean this. It's a personal depth with him. That's our hope. <laughs> First Kings 8, 6 to 8. My main verse there is verse 7, but for context, we'll read it from verse 6, 1 Kings 8. Then the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. That's the cherub now, uh uh-huh. Now you get a picture of what we're talking about when it covers. Now watch this. For the cherubim spread their two wings over the place of the ark and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. That's the kind of dwelling place he's talking about. Because you're talking about the ark of covenant here. The very warehoused presence of God. He begins to give man a picture of his kingdom. So that in that kingdom, the physical location of it, he said, I put a dimension of one who is so close he can cover. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will see of the Lord is my refuge and my strength. My God, in him will I trust. Do you know people beat up their wives because their trust is in money? One deal fails and it looks like it's their marriage that has failed. Do you know people, people become bad wives? Why? Their trust is in a man. Once the man shakes, their salvation experience is gone. Do you know people lose their salvation because husband has not come? There's a place deeper. That's the first dimension we must note. I won't spend so much time there because... Julia did so much there. Then the Gabriel dimension. What's the Gabriel dimension? That's the information and revelation dimension. Information and revelation dimension. A lot of people are bereft of knowledge. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Gabriel dimension is the information and revelation dimension. You will not do relationship and marriage well until you understand this dimension. You know what I find very amazing? Is that people just think that it will work because they are believers. God did not give you a brain to retire it, but to use it. And there are two dimensions to you. Your spirit can take spiritual information. Your mind can take natural information. Revelation and information. Let's see through scripture about this dimension. Luke 1 verse 19. Thank you Lord Jesus. Luke 1 19. Don't sleep on me now. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. <laughs> the angel needed to first of all tell him who he is. And let us see what Gabriel does. Who stands in the presence of God. 
to speak to you and bring you the glad tidings. He brings an information. He brings a revelation. Chapter 2, verse 10 of the same Luke gospel. Let's see further into Gabriel. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Sometimes we are afraid because we are ignorant. Sometimes we are afraid because we don't know what to do. I've met people who prefer to shift their wedding date because they're afraid of marriage. What are they really afraid of? What to do? What to do? What to do? Say, do not be afraid. Why? I bring you good tidings. Fear not. What you need to know. Uh -huh. Let me even give you an example of this dimension. You see that question you asked when we were teaching? Where will I meet him? How will I know her? Gabriel dimension. Excuse me, sir. I don't intend to disturb your siesta. By the way, they say you never sleep nor slumber. Oh, they didn't say you said it yourself. <laughs> so I know you are awake. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can you show me things to come? It's by Gabriel dimension we also have discernment. I was listening to Sam Adia me this afternoon. It's a part of it I posted this afternoon. Say the ideal husband a lot of people are looking at, an ideal wife, is not available because they are taken. Why are they taken? Somebody polished them to the admirable state you are seeing them. Now we have hangout. Then some people think I'm fine. I look like I didn't know where I was going to when this woman accepted. How many of you here want to marry somebody two months after his NYC? Do your white wedding. 15,000 naira salary. Living in Makodi, Benue, living in Makodi, Benue State. The first rent was 200,000. Somebody paid for him. 15 times 12. <laughs> I never have any chop food. It's crowd funny. They used to do my wedding. Then they didn't call it for crowd funny. No family marry for you. Praise God. But there's something called discernment. Remember when we were reading Isaiah? That kingdom, but we don't judge by the sight of the eyes. My sister, you will know things that eyes cannot understand. You will hear things that man cannot contain. If you ever perceive your future outside of the depth of the information God gives, you'll be misled. It does not yet appear. <laughs> I was cracking a joke with Julia. No disrespect meant. There were people a couple of years ago who won't even answer your greeting. Now they are your friends. It does not yet appear. There are a stage in life that it looked like no. <laughs> Why? I began to do a study of faith. Actually, the common definitions of faith are definitions from the earthly view or human standpoint. And I'll explain. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Good definition, but defined from a human perspective. Not a human view. Because every will of God has two views. For instance, is a risk oh, that Jesus went to the cross. What if he didn't wake up? But God's view was that he saw the end from the beginning. So there was no fear in God because he was going to resurrect. But man will see it. Why did Mary believe in him but still cry? She assessed the information from her flesh as mother. Let me give you a definition of faith from the spiritual perspective. 
Faith is the substance of things not just hoped for, but caught. But the hope is based on the catching. The evidence of things seen. Uh -uh. Seen where? Seen in the spirit. Things not seen, there is a description of things not yet manifest on the earth. But seen in the spirit. I'll give you the story. I heard this story of... Um, I don't know what rank he is now. We, we got so used to knowing him as Captain Moyo those days in McCordy, so that even when he was major and all those other ranks, we still were calling him Captain Moyo. But this story is told of Captain Moyo. I mean, very anointed military man, extremely anointed. So the story is told of, I think it's Major or Lieutenant Colonel, now, Lieutenant General, or something now. So let me be referring to Captain Moyo, okay? That, that when he was in India or so, you know how you are just topping your class. By the way, all the courses he goes for, he just comes out top, 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 top. He just believes that that's a dimension of spirit that must exist. You know how you walk into your lecturer's place, say they have to march in to collect their result. And they'll tell you your result, you salute again and go. Then you just top, 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 top. And they tell you distinction, as in first class, well, he was used to distinction, distinction, distinction. And you just and walk away. Then the person calls you back, no excitement. He said, I knew, sir. I knew it. It's not just based on physical knowledge. I knew it. So I celebrated long ago. You just gave me the physical result of what I had received. It was Pastor Mildred Oconquo that I heard say this. He said, back in the days, we don't marry people we have not received. Find Mark eleven twenty four. Let me explain receiving and having. He said, back in the day, you don't marry a person you have not received. Hey! Receiving is spiritual reality. Having is physical manifestation. Mark 11, 23, 24. I'll show you about receiving. So Gabriel brings a dimension you know. So when this auntie was doing all this for me, <laughs> there's a knowing that happens in your spirit. That's a part of the kingdom we're talking about. That's why Isaiah, for how many thousands of years before the Christ was manifested, could speak of him so accurately, Gabriel. For shortly I say unto you, whosoever shall, 24, 24. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore I say to you, what things whoever you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. It's not tautology. Receiving is when it hits your spirit. Having is when it manifests in the physical. <laughs> Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I receive. So Gabriel brings, this is what will bring you to the point that the things that have not happened in your life, people will be amazed. You are confident about them. This is when you stop speaking like others speak these days. Ah, marriage. There's no these days about it. Hey, men are, uh, there's no men around me. Why? Well, I dwell in a different realm. My information is different. I have intelligent reports. <laughs> they have looked into the matter. What I know, men, men don't know it. How oh, when you talk like this, they have come against you boasting. Spirit of the Lord lives inside of you. <laughs> ha! When I forget what I was singing, you're beautiful. Spirit of the Lord lives inside of you, or something like that. Then it's um, Buchida sang, You are wise, young man, you are wise. What was hidden from the wise men of old? The Lord has opened to you what a revelation of the mind of the Lord unto you. You are wise, young man. You are. See, I'm not lying to you. Let me lower my voice. I am wise. I am wise. If you are looking for a wise husband, I am one. Hey, some people's religion are being disturbed right now. This guy is proud. He's arrogant. 
I make my bows in the Lord because I got the Holy Spirit. Why am I wise? Please be jumping to Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Media, be jumping to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. I'll show you something. Why am I wise? Because I carry the Holy One of Israel. I know what to do, when I need to do it, and how I need to do it. I know what is to come before it comes because he speaks to me. I am confident and assured because I know the part. You know, sometimes religiously we just say, I know he, I don't know tomorrow, but I know the one who hurts tomorrow. The one who hurts tomorrow lives inside of me and he talks a lot. Did you just say what I said? The one who hurts tomorrow lives in me and he talks a lot. He wrote this entire book, which some of you have not chosen to finish. You have not even exhausted the written one. He still planted a spirit. He didn't just plant his spirit. Angels to get involved. Angels are not just involved. He still wakes some of you in the middle of your dream. You know when you dream that you were dreaming and you inside the dream, then you now wake up from the dream inside the dream before you now wake up in the physical. He's talking that much. Then he's not just talking that much. He chose to put a black man in front of you right now to still be giving you the word. And it doesn't just stop there. Your phone is full of music that talks about him. From Sinat to Frank Edward to McLaughlin to Judy K to everybody, he just keeps talking. And you tell me I'm not wise. When I'm drenched in wisdom, soaking in wisdom, swimming in wisdom all around, do you know who my pastor is? Do you know the people I follow online? Do you know they don't just stop talking because their father is not stopping? They're so surrounded with word. It is abomination to be foolish. Surrounded all around. Therefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Next verse. Thank you Jesus. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Next verse. I'll continue. That the Lord God of our, uh -huh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse. Uh -huh. That the eyes of your understanding may enlighten that you may know, knowing what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory in his earth. Uh, uh, of his inheritance in the saints, uh huh, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, mm -hmm, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, uh huh, far above. Let me now jump from this point into the Michael dimension. Let me say this to you the day Adam chose to fall. From that day, if you don't learn to contend and have the power and the dominion that God promised man from the beginning, your life will not happen. Village people are real, but they are not powerful. Satan is real, but he doesn't have to win. But you know what happens all the time? We complain more than we contend. Quote me, we complain more than we contend. can holy God in holy heaven make Michael and he's the only one in scripture who is even referred to as an ark why did he create a dimension in a place that was totally peaceful because based on the Gabriel dimension he saw that Michael would be required if God requires Michael why do you think your life can work without some power if God Almighty requires my care, why are you my careless? It's a dimension. The kingdom come. And we're now painting a picture of the kingdom. Why are we so delivered, so weak, small something happened, you just miss one country, you're crying like Jesus did not die, he died. You're not the only one with problems. 
In fact, I'm happy for you that you have a problem. It means sit down, consider your destiny, what it. There are people who doesn't fight. Their journey is determined. You know when people tell me, oh, Julie, why is it, why is it us that are not sleeping around, that it looks like it's hard? I know all my friends that are messing up. Nah, they are all married. And I'm like, you don't know exactly what you're talking about. Can we go and extray those marriages, what they look like? Let's not even extray it from the human point of view. Can we extray it from the purpose point of view? Satan doesn't contend with what is fixed. If I want his demons, don't touch that one. That one is, is, that one is finished. Is he walking there? Allow him, allow him just continue. You know, that's where some of those funny questions come from. I know this guy. He sleeps with anything he's scared. He drinks everything. He's never sick. He has made a, he has never had accident. He has never, he has never, he has never, he has never. What is Satan's business with that one? What's Satan's business with that one? His destiny is settled. Except God intervenes, he's, he's finished. Satan is just allowing him to run a useless course. And the earth in which we live. It's only destruction that appears natural. And you are bringing life and you think there's no contention. Let me tell you, indeed, if you want to sleep around, you may either be in a relationship right now or even married. But you are 99.9% in the chance of being a counseling project. So I came to speak a word of encouragement to you while we talk about the Michael dimension to understand that why you contend, number one, you contend from a place of victory, but why you are contending from a place of victory, toughen up. The world is going to get harder to live. Quote me. Because, sir, when things used to be normal, it is temptation if we're in a relationship to... <laughs> But now the abnormality of the end time is come to the point where believer is warning believer, I want to date you to marriage. If we are not doing, I'm not doing. You know, if an unbeliever says that to you, your heart will not collapse. But when somebody does this in church, and is not considering that a temptation but a warning. Ah. Ah. But is that not the age in which we live? So toughen up! We'll be taking our victory part time, part time. But before we take any particular victory, you need to toughen up and see judging faithful. Lord, I've been faithful. You know, we used to sing, You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past. No, you sing it to God. I've been faithful, Lord, since these ages past. Why are you still slow in love? Why are you dulling and falling my hand? I've been faithful. I have been, I have been, I have been toughened up. I haven't done all to stand, stand. I've had cause to tell some sister, you won't marry yourself. And you won't procure a man. By the way, let me tell you, sisters, sometimes they say I'm biased for sisters, yes. I have been speaking to all the foolish boys a lot of sisters in church, the reason is that they are the people that God has designed. Foolishness still worrying them. Some of them are still waiting to buy a car. Like it's car that they used to take out of marriage. If you are here, brother, <laughs> especially if you have used your Christianity to press any breast and you are still single, you have capacity to touch breasts, you don't have capacity to go and visit father. I contend against you tonight. <laughs> Some brothers are the ones rendering sisters alone. Because we have taught the sisters to wait. The waiting is becoming long suffering. <laughs> because of brothers who don't have sense. See me. I'm an example. I want to buy a car. See, my car doesn't have AC. Did they tell you that she wants winter? Her father did not have cars. You in the car, no AC. Hi. 
I need to do it. Number one, I have to toast a woman. This was this generation, behavior everywhere. Some people have lost the women that God gave them because of their toasting skill. Say, Sister Nectar, you are looking today like an eagle. What is eagle? <laughs> you are looking like an eagle. Eagle? When I look at you, I just wonder what God was thinking when He created you. What kind of talk is this? <laughs> ah! I'm talking contention. I don't know who is pulling me to say this one. Uh, here, let me tell you. You see this contention. I'm not kidding. See, you know when I say this thing, people just say, you know, that's how people be talking. Don't See, contention is contention. You want to let God, who you go and contend through His power, tell you, I'm the one that wants you still single by now. Then can I say, excuse me, sir, why? I heard something some years ago. I, it was it was barrier related, so I can understand why. You see, we can ask God questions, but we can't question Him. See, there's a difference. Why, sir? Okay, if you if if you are protecting me from something, what is it? And what next? Let me say something. That's why I read Mark eleven twenty four. There's place for desire now. We're talking about the kingdom where he sent them out to go and make enforcements. You know, he had not died, those guys had not gotten born again. He sent them out. This kingdom is not devoid of power. If God, are you Michael S? Simple, so drawn, ready for nonsense. How much nonsense have we accommodated in our lives? So while you are being strong and you are, let me say this to you. One of the things regarding our unfulfilled desires, regard it. Next to each other and just pretend it is where it is where it is where. Say to the right choice, it is where like and it is where there's just an excuse for laziness. Yes, and it is where there's an excuse. I know when I'm inside this, it is where. Depression from which spirit? That means the Holy Spirit is depressed. So it takes walking out of the contention zone where the Holy Spirit is present to say we are depressed. It will happen as single. It will happen. You know, the reason the Lord would have us learn these things is because inside marriage, <laughs> you think you are seeing contention. He will throw everything. He will throw everything. Have you not seen people tell you, I looked at my wife, I can't, I looked again. I said, what's going on? Is this my wife? Is it the one I married or another one? Contentions that will require more. If believers will take more responsibility than complain. You know this handout behavior? God, just do it. Just do it. Just do it now. Let me tell you a few things about God. He said before you ask, he knew. Or he knows. But why did he say ask and you receive? If he knew before you asked, why are you asking? And let me quickly say this to you, since we are doing relationship and marriage. You really need. You know, because of the pressure we put on society. When you tell people, oh, you are next for marriage. No, hey, yes. You want it. 
You didn't even sleep last night because you are thinking, when now? God, when? For us, but why are you pretending you are too with God? You know, those people that don't speak for never, when, when you tell them to leave prayer in public, Lord, we thank you. Oh, glory. Please, glory. Say glory. God, I want marry. When you people think I'm joking, man. how can I be talking, Mikey, and I'm joking? Asking God questions is good, but let me tell you what Michael really does. Michael already knows the mind of God and uses it as a battle axe. Michael, hold up your life and say, This does not look like what God said. That's the dimension. This does not look like. When you hear some family say, we've been praying about it, oh, thank God. You know what they just said? They just said, we might kill the situation. We insisted. We took a stand. So Satan put a resistance in a way, we put a stand. And we refused to let go. The micro dimension is the dominion and authority dimension of the kingdom. If you see Jude chapter 9 verse 9, is, no, Jude verse 9, you see that he's the only one referring to an archangel. Chapter 10 verse 3, quickly, and we'll be this on. Daniel 10 verse 13, I ate no pleasant food Place, but the prince told me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help, left alone, dear with the kings of Persia. When you speak, it obeys when you show. Everything just let me use this because you read somewhere also in G that Michael disputed the body of Moses. He could not rebuke Lucifer. The Lord rebuke you. Let me give you a very quick picture about our Michael dimension at this level. I will not say the Lord rebuke you. When Michael contended with Lucifer at that time, Michael was below our position. And I'll explain. The Bible says he made him a little lower than Elohim. Some translations say angel because the translators were afraid to think you are just a little lower than Elohim. Please come with me. God made man only next to him. That's why he could put him on earth just the way colonial master sent there as a representation. Then angels are ministering spirit. Come with me. Then he gave earth to man, Adam. So please come. So this is Adam. Please come. No, you are now Lucifer. Go. I can't make my sister Lucifer come. This is man that he made with authority. You know what happened? Dude, this is your authority. Had this guy showed up here, she wouldn't need to say the Lord to rebuke you. She said, get out of here. Follow me. She handed over the authority. Then his great big son Moses died. Close your eyes. I am not like him. This is still body and flesh on earth. They did not contend for Moses' spirit or for his body. Within X realm, where authority now is with this guy. So Michael could only approach in the name of a higher authority to speak to this guy. Because he had legal rights here. 
In Christ, I have taken this. So if this guy shows up, I tell him get out. People quote that scripture in, in June and just make it look like that. Satan is so powerful, you need to go and not say. And Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth is given to know the religion, the pastor. So that when the devil moves, as I say, submit yourself to God, that's family business. They turn to the devil with a sister. God bless you. Some of us have cried over things we are going to come out tonight. Crying won't fix it. Depression won't fix it. Anxiety won't fix it. Thinking won't fix it. How many of you, by taking thought, have been able to have one given it? Final scripture. Revelation 12, 7 to 10. Verse 10 is our focus for 7, 8, and 9 will give us context. Aye, aye, aye. Are you ready for the kingdom? So you guys get ready with the kingdom business in a few minutes and a war broke out in heaven. In God's physical palace. <laughs> so God is it. But he still makes his dwelling a place. It is the location where he makes the headquarter of the kingdom. War can break out. I came to announce to you. <laughs> Like the matters of your life are destiny. There may not be war. There shall be contentious and rumors. This is not a sign of the end of rumors of war. It's not rumor. <laughs> it is war. You people read your Bible. A group came against Paul for preaching the Bible. They said they will not eat or sleep until he's dead. For preaching Jesus. That's my sin. I say you're not know, going to talk to him or you are dying. Apparently, those people must have died because boy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Contention! Uh -huh. in the end time, I must preach marriage to you like this. The devil throws this in. I'll give you the good news, which you have always said, which excites you anyway, which is the truth. You are fighting from a point of victory. Alright? But let us not pretend that on the flesh, when some of the contention comes, it's normal. It's not normal. It doesn't feel cool. So, <laughs> war broke out. They would have just said paradise or somewhere lower. Heaven. I mean, God was sitting in that war. <laughs> yeah. That's why I tell you, eh? Preach the gospel, but you are not the savior. Some people know go still here. It's not God's will for any to perish, but hell will be full. Men will choose it. <laughs> hey. You know, they used to use it to preach for pastors for church break and church split. Through scripture, we understand a third is still. I know some theologians argue that that's not referring to Lucifer. I am of the school of thought. I agree with the school of thought that refers to when you put all the references of the star, the blah, blah, is Lucifer carrying a thought of heaven. People were in the very presence of God and could be deceived. And you say somebody's not greeting your church, you want to lose your salvation. <laughs> Just physical church. I'm talking presence of Elohim. They had access to God Almighty. Somebody could still speak them out of his presence. Then somebody broke up with you. Instead of you to be concerned that he actually lost his salvation first and to have sense, you are concerned with the breakup. When he broke up with God, before he broke up with you. If anybody breaks up with you, who has broken up with God? Be crying and rejoicing at the same time. Have you never seen rain and sun shining at the same time? It happens. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. <laughs> Lord, it's not tears of worship, it's tears of pain, but I worship you. <laughs> I thought it would happen this year. This fool came and broke my. <laughs> oh, 
Oh God, December 2021, fat. Ah, oh, when November, then you find another relationship. They are just married now. Oh, I worship you. It is pain, but you know better. It hurts, but I know better. War broke out. But I fight from a place of victory. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. Please, you need to take note of that word. Fought. They did not just say, they fought. <laughs> you know, it's all like, let me quickly explain. Anything that has element of process attached to the concept of heaven is actually something that God imported time because of. Because God is spirit and dwells in eternity. So when he begins to describe something in terms of time, it means he wanted us to see the importance of what process he took. So, Michael, and not just Michael, he came with his entourage. Fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. <laughs> but you leave this headache, this head, I don't, I don't pray, I don't pray, pray again. Have you not seen some things in your life you pray, it looks like it left. <laughs> and you're wondering where it came from. Michael fought. Then the dragon and his angels fought. No, you know a lot of believers. <laughs> we have lied to you people from here. Now the eternity done. Hey, man. As you are going out this week, one million dollar. Do the exchange rate in your mind. Five hundred and something million. Hey, man. Then you step out of church, you realize that your neighbor stole your money. <laughs> realize your neighbor stole your money inside church. <laughs> like the day somebody picked my wife and I's iPad from his service. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how? <laughs> if your rent is due next month, it's still due next month. If humanly speaking, you don't have money for it. You don't have money for it, humanly speaking. You fought and the rent fought. If you came here without relationship, you are still not living here with relationship. Because even if I say greet your neighbor, it's just greeting level. You cannot call it relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the emotion will not disappear. Because this dragon fault that we're talking about for some people is emotion. Is you come and have a high. If I know people when they come to our meetings, they, they, they wish it does not end. Why? It creates a cocoon of safety. We cannot keep the cocoon going. You have to live in the presence, not in a program. Presence is different for... In a few minutes, you see this place now. You see a strong wind of the spirit. Why? It's like fuel station. It charges you for a journey. So this is actually not your place of safety, but his presence where you contend through. You just came to refuel. <laughs> Dragon even has confidence to fight. You know, Satan believes he will take over. Now imagine all of us with Satan's regime. Jesus. This is how we're working. <laughs> And I mean it. Hope you know the, the worst thing you can do to Satan right now is give him a mirror. Oh, you don't know? Please don't go and build a doctrine for me to carry a mirror in your bag. <laughs> Satan just you know. <laughs> you just break it. <laughs> but here's the deal, for real. For real. So what we do is we mirror God's word. We stand as a reflection of all he lost. Do you know what I said so? What gave him the beauty we described under the uh, Lucifer dimension is the presence of God. Everything outside of the presence of God goes into corruption. So I used to say it this way fictionally, that in the gathering of demons and devils, the only thing they can't permit is a mirror. 
Satan can't see himself outside what he used to know. He can't. There's this movie, I can't remember the name, where the king was like, I think it was leprous, he had a disease, so he always wore a mask, and I think the sister offended him, and he had to take off his covering and told the sister to kiss his hand. It was when he took off the one of his face, that uh, the, the movie's depiction, he was half-faced. So he was just living to die, but he was the king, so nobody could kill him. That gives me the near picture of how the Lord gave me this revelation in my heart. Satan can't behold himself. He can't. He can't even imagine himself. And it didn't take one year. One second after he was thrown out of heaven, corruption set in at a rate he couldn't believe. Because everything that gave him the beauty was the presence. Next verse. But they did not prevail. This is exactly the mindset with which we contend. Who did not pre prevail? The dragon and his angels. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Thy kingdom comes means I will contend in a way that there's no place left for them any longer in me. This is where Jesus stood boldly and said, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. That means my contention even in, includes character improvement based on studying the word. Because many times when you tell Nigerians contention, all they think is, yaga, 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 yaga. Then the man greets you say, nonsense. Or oh, you approach a woman, no package. You're not contending. Contention is also in the package. Giving him no place here is treating this woman well. Then, of course, the one that you take direct authority. See, as I'm speaking before we pray, have a search through your life. What is present that should have no place? What is present in my life? What is a factual reality that should not exist? Verse 9. So, the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Next verse. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the kingdom the kingdom is where the domain of God is to the exclusion of Satan. And the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Rise tonight, everybody. Can you say your kingdom come in my life, in my marital destiny? Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. That's our prayer tonight. Very simple prayer. Your kingdom come. Anything that does not reflect the kingdom, it's over. Time up. Anything that does not reflect the kingdom, time up. <laughs> Any reality or fact that does not reflect the kingdom, time up. Any condition that does not reflect the kingdom, time up. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thank <laughs> you. 
song really but it's going to be corporate slash individual time of encounters the one we can practice here now now we are practice listening receiving information and revelation the lucifer dimension is the vulnerable uh, position of depth and intimacy is getting to God there's a dimension we'll practice now you know one of the things the Lord showed me towards this very sit out is yokes that will be broken. Yeah. All right, so now, um, yeah, I know the anointing of the Lord is present. I mean, it's so mighty. You will take certain situations in your life personally, this minute, and say enough. You will say enough. See, as I was, before I stopped them, one of the ones that hit my heart strongly is circles that you know are not circles of God. I see, you know this circle. This same thing keeps happening like this. It happened, it happened again. Happened, it happened again. Happened, it happened. We take out five minutes. Value those five minutes now. We want to use the five minutes. I mean, it's just our use of the time we've got. Please stop every distraction. Even all volunteers right now, please stop any other thing. Let's all receive. If any other duty, let's focus. Let's use five, five, ten minutes, five. Let's make it ten so that we can really, please pour it out. You are pouring out to God, that's the part of God, and you are commanding it is enough. Kingdom, come in this area. Kingdom, come in this area.